three, two, one. Hey, Thank keepers you, and conjurers. Hey, guys. So we're doing a bit of a Sunday Father's Day walk in the neighborhood that's near us. We wanted to get out and get some of this beautiful weather and wind. I'll show you guys the colonials. Yes, these beautiful <laughs> old homes. A lot of these homes are over 60 years old in this area. Uh, it's a lot of energy around here. The trees are beautiful. Um, Suburbia. Yeah. So, how's everyone's Father's Day? Yes, let, let us know how things are going. Put down below, what did you do for Father's Day? Um, did you celebrate any particular rituals? Um, is your father still with you? Um, if not, there there is a great uh, ritual where you can create kind of a death altar to, put, to kind of honor them and make sure that you give uh, him what he liked when he was alive. Uh, you know, we've said it many times on, on the channel, but they do. Uh, enjoy that kind of thing when you leave them offerings in that way. Also, with the 360 camera, you can kind of spin around and see our whole bodies. Um, a lot of you guys have been wondering, getting killed updates. With this camera, you will be able to see people's reaction. You'll be able to spin down and see what I'm wearing. And it's a particularly windy day, so I know a lot of people have questions when it's windy. So. Now you get to kind of see the full ensemble. <laughs> well, we actually are supposed to go the other way. You want to the double back, okay? Now with kilts, there is this thing. They didn't really have pockets back when kilts were originally envisioned. So uh, you can get pockets that go into belt loops. Uh, a lot of bagpipers can get those augmented pop pockets. Um, but most people are expected to wear what's called a sporin. So it's like a leather bag that sits near the groin area and it holds everything inside of your, which, which would normally be like your wallet. So for the Scottish, that's considered a man purse basically. And it's so heavy, it weighs down the front apron. So if wind does roll up, it won't literally blow up and show your business to the world. Mm -hmm. Even if it's an empty sporing, it's still pretty heavy. The leather is pretty heavy. For you folks out there who are vegan, uh, they do have uh, vegan leather. If you are wanting to get into kil kilting and you don't have, you're worried about having to rely on a leather bag. I think the correct term is they say it preserves your posterity by keeping it from blowing up. Also, it gives it a really cool chime, the sporn, like a galloping. Yes, if you hear that noise, that's exactly what you hear. Um, it, it, it also has some esoteric properties. That noise, uh, if spelled correctly, can, can actually kind of almost part the Red Sea in the spirit world, as it were, when you, wherever, you're, wherever you're walking. Um, traditionally, the Scottish used it to kind of bat away flies from the area because, you know, way back then, uh, you know, people didn't have showers every day like what we have. I mean, some of you folks may, pr may, may be pretty young and don't understand the history of showers, but That's it was actually, yes, it was actually um, Ben Franklin who uh, basically said, hey guys, you need to start taking showers. So it was that long ago, even Americans weren't taking showers every day. Which is weird because if you look at Rome, they had public baths. So there's a huge like gap in history where people just really didn't understand being cleansing and cleaning themselves and stuff. Do you guys see like a, like, like a wire behind my leg that's just for the top mics? Um, I'm wearing something very revealing it's really relaxed day it's my off day so you might see something like wiggling in the back um we're not properly mic'd because we wanted to impromptu walk for you guys and comfortability with your own skin like i'm learning more and more of that for this year speak of comfortability um a lot of people have been asking about your sexual orientation and I guess like 
masculine like beliefs or masculine roles that you project in like our our home or something like that. I don't know. It's just maybe perhaps we can let a shed a light on our relationship, our partnership, our marriage. So I'll let Alduin talk about that. Well, well, I mean, there is another video where I I talked about um like my personal journey um and i'll leave the link down here below if you haven't seen that one but in, in that one i kind of went into detail about how there's a difference in a substance uh coming from a black christian baptist household um versus how her family has accepted me because of how thailand is much more accepting of um differences in sexual orientation but personally i describe myself as queer because I've had an evolution of kind of realizing that I have my own version of body dysmorphia in a way. Like when I was coming up, I found it hard to really understand the difference between uh, males and females, especially people who skew more toward the middle, people who you would call non-binary today. Those people, I just saw them as people. Like I didn't, I didn't, wasn't sure. I would easily, even in video games, like if there was any masculine uh, design to the character, I thought it was a man or a female, and most people were saying, no, no, this is this is that, or this is that. So I believe there may be a reverse version of it where you're not sure what you're attracted to, but I feel like science hasn't really pegged that down yet. So, you know, fast forward to today, I'm married to a beautiful trans woman, and I consider myself to be queer because I need a certain level of masculine and feminine energy to keep me happy and to keep me balanced yeah not something as you know as masculine as say a denzel washington or a wesley snipes but someone but wesley snipes got his got his feminine inside for that for that movie that he did in drag what, dressing. That, that, that jawline oh my gosh that's like Ooh, a jawline is for days yes <laughs> but um for example, on the shrine right now. Yes, yes, there is a shrine here. So usually we will show respect to the shrine. So we're going to do that now, even while we're on camera. So you'll be able to span around and see what we're, what, what, what we're doing and how, and how we do it. Oh, literally, there are water bottles. Oh my here. gosh. Yep. Is there a trash bin? No. No, but I'm sure, I'm sure they come out and clean it up from time to time. But um, uh, another good example of this is uh, the folks over on the whole show. Like, l literally, in watching that show, I, I, I didn't know much about it. I just knew that there were some trans women in there. I didn't know that, like, the whole cast was trans. Like, literally, seeing those women, as far as we're saying. Most of the cast. Most, most, <laughs> most, most of the cast. Seeing those women, I was like, okay, then, you know, they're, they're, they're women. But now, after looking into the history of it, the trans women. I was like, wow, I did not know that. For me, they just, I saw that they had masculine and feminine energies and it just clicked. I was like, these people are beautiful. And to to like look up the actresses' names and realize, wow, they are trans women. I thought the stories too. that they, I thought that they were like uh, biological women basically getting paid, some of them getting paid to act as a trans woman. So that goes back into that reverse body dysmorphia thing, like not understanding that these certain masculine traits are something that may come from someone who was biologically male at the time. So mm -hmm. for me, it just makes it where I'm more a more accepting of their sexuality and I'm happy to be with them. But I don't know if science will ever get around to that. I feel like a lot of men already have fragile egos to begin with. So t t talking about something as sensitive as that with science probably will not happen for a long time people won't put that put money into that 
Um, I think they should, though. It's doing a disservice so people can really understand what's going on. Um, there's one character in the show. What is his name, actually? The one that came from uh, American Horror Story. Ryan Murphy? Uh, the actor who played Mr. March. Um, Evan Peters. Yeah, so Evan Peters' character arc, I think he's done because the show is ending on the third season, so I don't expect to see him back. I think he just finished. But um, Evan Peters himself, like, what he says to... No, we got left on mic, so we're fine. Um, no, at, I'm looking at to see if there's cars. Evan Peters' um, character said something to one of them, and he was saying that he found what he loves. And I feel like there is a moment in there where the writers may have written him as being something that he may not have been. Like, they wrote him as someone who wants to keep her, keep his particular love interest bottled up and to kind of play with her like a plaything, whereas he might have been rationalizing what he actually um, loves. That's the particular aspect I'm talking about. I feel like there's a, there's a large portion of men who are in that kind of window, but it doesn't get talked about. It doesn't get analyzed. There's no word for that reverse body dysmorphia where they are completely and over, overly in love with that like meshing of masculine and feminine energies. And for good reason. I mean, uh, many of the people in the community don't want to explore the, their masculine side. They, there's this big push to say, I have no masculine energy. I am a woman, which is true. At the same time, there, there's going to be a little bit of leftover residual energy. Like, for, for example, the bone structure is hard to change. You know, um, and... Like it, the voice doesn't get feminized with hormones, replacement therapy, and some people have to take speech therapy to um, be able to sound sound a little bit more feminine. Um, but sometimes, like, the strong, the strong features, like bone structures, like... We can't really change that, guys. And it's those it's those small little traits that peak enough masculinity for me to act, for me to go, hey, there's something there that, that I click with. I, I can connect with that energy, and I and I feel like it's a uh, it's almost I, I don't know. I guess it it's like a coming home or a realizing where you fit in the puzzle piece. That's the, that's that's the only way I can kind of articulate it. And I, I I felt that that his character may have been trying to express that. But, you know, these characters are at the mercy of, of the writers, so the character arc changed a bit, and it's kind of, he didn't really say this, but it's kind of seen as though that he wasn't thinking that way, that he just wanted a play thing. I guess I should put in here, um, nine writers that wanted to know if we had any um, servitors for our, you know, specifically for our, our protection. And I'll let Elle answer that because, you know, we have a list of them, actually. Yes, we have um, different servitors that are tasked to do different things. The majority of them are ward bound to our perimeters. Um, I have other beings that do, uh, ta we have other beings that do the task, um, the work, but um, however, it's just like so general. Servitars are really great for numbers of reasons, and I'll let you take it away, Well, Mr. I, I, Rayo. Well, the <laughs> last two that we had arrived were actually from Summerland Court with Altier. I'm not sure if her name has changed sometimes depending on the mood the name will change but it's a discord server that specializes her in proper name right now is altier yes from what we know yes uh, but some of you guys might know her um or this particular person as kit yes kit or altier perfect mm -hmm. <laughs> i completely forgot about the first name that i saw her at but yes um she specializes in what she calls auras and if you look on her discord server auras are just basically thought forms um, that have a lot of energy that's poured into them. Um, and she has an entity that's based off of Mu. Uh, she refers to it as Mu. And uh, in our studies, we have found that in many of this fiction, uh, these like these fantasy-based fictions, uh, we're finding that 
these realms exist, these beings exist. It's just that, you know, J.J.R. Martin or Tolkien, these folks may have been tripping and actually slipped into this realm. So then they're able to bring bits and pieces back and they start writing stories about the history of these realms. So a lot of, so a lot of times they may be, uh, you may see them as servitors, but in, in their reality, they're actually beings that come from this realm. So um, I'm saying all this to say is that we did pick up um, a mu based being from her and kind of a virtual assistant from her as well as a number of like astral weapons and things from her and um she she dropped them off in the astral and they've been integrated um into our keep and they work quite well um i will say that i would like to get a little bit more documentation uh, i know that that she's very very busy and you know not everybody's going to send you a big itemized list of every magical word i understand i understand that um uh, we kind of have to go back to the listing from time to time or take a picture of it and keep it in our, keep it in our own notes and then it comes down to how organized of a keeper are you right do you keep notes on every being there you go there, there you go on your pc okay good 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 you know <laughs> so you keep notes on every being because we are very anal about that i keep notes right down to the very minute that they arrive so I know, you know, when their birthdays are. When I say birthdays, I mean if they've been with you for a year, that's kind of like their birthday. It's kind of their celebratory date for joining you. Um, Which we had one yesterday, or this week, Yes. I guess. We have a digital demon who um, loves different things that are party-related. Yes. <laughs> but uh, as far as the protection... Um, those beings uh, work very well with warding, uh, with chakra cleansing, uh, energetic cleansing, um, and building energetic walls. Um, so, some of them are based around actual energy combat. So we've got a wide, a wide range of um, protective base beings. I hope that answered the question for you, Nine Risler. And guys, if you have any other question like that, don't hesitate. Throw them down below because it helps us by answering the question for you. And then also kind of tells the algorithm that, hey, people are interested in this more, right? Mm -hmm. If you want spirit keeping to be kind of more of a... Oh, we just passed the colonials. I didn't even say anything. I'm oh, so God. sorry. <laughs> yes, you have to rewind it back yeah. and pan around in circles or something like that back there. Now we're in the cottages, village style. Someone has a congratulations, you did it in their yard, and we're trying to figure out what did they do. Um, graduation. Oh, okay. I, usually, I'm looking for a year. Like, sometimes they'll say, 2022, congratulations. I don't, I see nothing of that back there, so I was confused. Maybe it's a graduation and a birth at the same time. And, yes. um, entrance to adulthood, I yes. guess. Let us know if you like these kind of walks, guys, in the description box below. We're not going to be editing our 360 walks. We kind of wouldn't want to give you the, shall I say, unfiltered 360-ness of this. Um, we want you guys to have fun. We've been walking very, very much around our neighborhood. And, of course, our favorite park. And then you guys will be getting a um, vlog, too, speaking about Altier. And, um discords and everything our video will be released soon um usually for mondays we want to give you guys a monday mundane manifestation kind of like a like a vlog for you guys for monday it seems as if it's a little bit more um copacetic with our schedule yeah i mean we realize that a lot of folks are, are kind of winding down um, from, you know, a complicated or drama-filled weekends and Mondays can kind of be that day where you really just don't want to be in the office. So, you know, we hope to help entertain you when you have to be back there again um, and get you some good content to look at. Our aim is to kind of get some m magical, esoteric stuff more toward the middle of the week. So we're talking about Wednesdays. 
um, see if we can nail down that new schedule. So mundane Mondays and kind of witchy Wednesdays in a way, if you think about it. Yeah, we compiled a lot of footage too and a lot of content. However, you know, we don't want to say that we're rebranding. Um, we just wanted to give you guys current and accurate real time um, postings and hopefully with the premiere and the live stream vlogs you guys will enjoy it um, a lot of you guys love the premiere and talking about like the countdown and everything yes I saw it too I got very very excited everyone got excited in the office and um, he did a good setup for Alvin did a good setup for um, the stream uh, the premiere I really enjoyed it I want to do more of these types of um, videos for you guys because sometimes you know as speaking about body dysmorphia a lot of times trans and um, let's just say cis people tend to be put in roles as Alvin was talking about before and me and Alvin really want you guys to be who you are but also embrace like this speaking of a guy right now like if you guys want to hand to his kilt right now like literally he's wearing a kilt like if he can do it, you can do it, right? Indeed, it does take a certain <laughs> level of balls. I'll tell you that, though. People. High heels, guys, especially for yeah. my ladies out there. You don't have to be feminine wearing high heels well, at the, all. Well, if you have the stride now. If you have the stride, the endurance, and the time and opportunity to go right ahead. Um, you know what Mama says, for me, I wear at least a wedge for my sneakers. Flats what? Flats doesn't exist for me. Ask him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and if you don't have the stride, you, you can learn. You can learn the stride. If you look at many of the models. Pose. Just look at Pose. You get a whole tutorial in one of their episodes. Many of them had to like build that stride over time. However, there is a certain level of like feminine talent that they're born with. Because Can I show them how to strut in this, in this thing? Sure, go right ahead, just go straight. Well, I can't, now we're downhill. Downhill is a little bit, okay, let me go first. Downhill is a little bit difficult, but always head up. Let me go forward. Always head up. Shake your, shake your little hip. Okay. And when you want to look behind you guys, just off of this, because that's like a little bit busy. I see. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, that's how I strut. Do you like my strut? Was it sexy enough? Oh, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> and we're going to hold our hips like this when you're walking. You can hold your hips too for support. Sometimes when you're strutting, your, your lower back hurts. Now hold your hips. Come on, hold your hips. Oh, my God. Hold them hips. <laughs> you're going to be str No, you're not escorting me. You're strutting. Escorting now. <laughs> escorting mode initiated. What separates the men from the women, huh? Stunning. This is the entrance. I used um, to walk this. So I used to walk this all the time, and like, uh, L, how long have you lived here? Like a, lo a long, long, long time, and. This is where I kind of like grew up walking through this woods to go back home from school and come back to like the grassroots of like what raised my former self and what made me today. I am so fortunate to, I'm so fortunate to actually, we are so fortunate actually to have this platform and to still be humbled in our um path right babe like Indeed. we couldn't i couldn't think of anywhere else to live except for montgomery county you know we've been i've been here for a very long time and we tried uh, to go to different places but we always end up here right Indeed. uh this is something that you guys don't want to swim in or i, I don't think i'll be able to see it hopefully hopefully Good. Hopefully the framing has saved you. Just listen to the water and just imagine it being a crisp, clean spring. It's not really crisp. Not at all. But it's not really clean. It's not, not, real, not, not clean at all. 
sounds better than it looks at the most. All right. So I hope you guys get your endorphin rush um, from watching this because I know that some of you guys want to escape your office or escape whatever job you're doing right now. Um, I want you guys to actually be safe too. With these solar flares, there's a lot of irate people, um, a lot of belligerent people, bigoted people. Um, and I want to give you, I want Aldwin to tell you guys how he handles anger because it's hard oh it's hard for a Sagittarius like him to you know keep it cool calm and collected but well for know. well first and foremost uh you know fire signs in general need to find a way to quickly ground themselves i'm a big fan of copper um and then i'm also a a a, a, a student a very young student of stoicism um i'm trying to use the stoic way to help me um kind of burn this energy because um with you know fire signs we have to find somewhere to burn it right and uh i find that grounding kind of grounds out that that energy my wife she'll always say you know water off a duck's back or ground noise and static those are her yeah go to her word. terms yeah <laughs> um none of which helped me because you know she is earth sign so she it kind of has a way of being grounded but in a way she doesn't either so it's like she will go straight ahead toward the situation, whereas I'm thinking about uh, how can I completely make sure this, this situation never happens again. Or, or I'll think about, you know, this person that, that has made me angry, if I don't do something about this, they're going to go on and hurt other people. So meditation is also very important, too. Um, I'm, there is something called Holosync, and I enjoy using that. Uh, for meditation, some of my early meditative revelations came as a result of using Holocene. Uh, in fact, uh, the Pathfinder program, the soundtracks that I designed are very similar to Holocene. So if you guys are fans of Holocene or if you understand what uh, that system is, um, that's what we're offering in the Pathfinder program. This is how we're helping people connect with spirits, how they're able to get results through the Shamanic Journey soundtrack that we have. We kind of set you up with a series of soundtracks that will get you in the right mindset to be open to spirit communication. Well, guys. And for you Tauruses, too. Grab noise and static and water off a duck's back. Well, guys, we're coming up on the end of our walk here. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this little walk. Uh, if you enjoy these kind of things, please post that down below. We'll do more of them if you like it. Just let us know. Um, make good decisions for you and your family. Blessed be. Blessed be.